hello and welcome in this video we are going to do the last section of our app which is the wishlist button here you know if i refresh the page it is not going to activate this button this wishlist for my user is in the wishlist database but every time i refresh this button is not active imagine that's like an issue so every time so if this item is in my wishlist so this button should be active by default so it is not like that if i check sql pro and refresh this is the product and everything is here but this is not active so in this video you will learn how you can do this one still i can click on this one it is active but it didn't change anything here so if i refresh it is going to be gone so if i come to the code let's see how we can fix this issue now what i am going to do is i'm going to create another function called check wishlist instead of removing so the check wishlist will be called uh, for the product page and it is going to check if this product is on wishlist make the button active that's easy right so what i can do is i can duplicate this function and just rename it so the reason i do is because i want to make it easy so it is going to be called check wishlist if you know how to do this one it is very easy like check wishlist and everything is going to be the same because i'm going to send the shop id i'm going to send the customer id as well as the product id those are the important thing imagine if a customer is in two different store and that's why i need the cust like the shop id also for this one it is going to send an ajax request to this endpoint which does not exist currently but let's create that endpoint i'm going to come to the api.php and i will duplicate the last route here i'll paste this one and instead of calling the, con the destroy uh, function it is going to call a function called check and this function as you know it is in the wishlist controller so if i open the controller the function should be here it doesn't exist i'm going to duplicate the destroy function and instead of this one i'm going to check the specific resource for storage i don't know if that makes sense or not but instead of the destroy i'm going to call it check easy right so what is this are going to do it is going to accept the request and you know in the delete it was finding the item and this one was removing it for me when it find it let's check if it find or not and then you can return it it is very easy so if it finds something it is not going to be null if it could not find it it is going to be null so what i can say is i can just write a condition say if item means if item exists then you can return one else it is going to return oops oops what i am writing now it is going to return zero for this one i hope it makes sense because we have the request we get the shop id the customer id the product id and if this one exists or if it is on the database it is going to return the data so if the data exists return one which means we have this otherwise return zero we do not have it so now what i can do here i can just console the log it here now let's call this function and see if it works now where do i call this function basically i can call it anywhere i want let's say i can call it but how would the parameter like we need the customer id and the product id how would you do this one it is also very simple what you can do is you can say if this exists you know what is this this is the wishlist selector which is the button we said document.query selector and if this button does not exist the wishlist button is going to be null so if it exists uh, it means we have this button in our database so this button will have all the data the customer id and the product id so i can check against this one the thing that the reason i do this one is because it is how it works i can explain it more for you but this is a lot easy for me to just show you how easy it is now i bring the function up here i will also indent it a little bit now as you know this function is going to accept two parameters the first one is going to be customer and the second one is going to be the id very simple i can just copy this one and paste it here also it is going to be war now this time we don't have access to this this was accessible uh, inside the add event listener but here we don't have access to this 
but we have access to button that is very simple that's basically it when this button exists it means we are in the product page then call the function pass this parameter customer id and the product id which is this one now i, I save it now let's come to the code here or you will also inspect the element let's clean up everything here and refresh the page once you refresh the page this is the response the data is one because this item is in the database for me now let's see if it returns zero if i remove it i add it i remove it now this is removed i will make sure it is removed from the sql pro and now coming back here i will refresh and let's see this time yes the data is zero because it doesn't exist in my database cool so here is what i can do i can come to the code coming to the function which is called check wishlist on the response of this one i'm going to find this button and see if the response is equal to one add a class of active to that one simple right i don't have to query again so you want to make it fast just cut this one from here and put it at the top why i do this one because i will have access to this button throughout my let's say functions here i will scroll down and now what i can do is instead of console.log i'm going to check if response.data is equal to one i am going to say a uh, like the wishlist button here and this is going to add a class to that one so i'll copy this one and say add a class to this one otherwise don't do anything if that makes sense i will save it now let's check out again now coming here refresh your page it doesn't do anything because this is not in the wish list i will add it now it is in the wish list now if i refresh the page it refresh and make the button as active that's simple now i will go go to catalog and this is the other product if i come to this product no this is not active because i don't have it in my wish list click on this yes it is in my wish list and now coming back here to the next product i do have both of them in the wish list to make sure if it is in the database just refresh your sql pro or any database here you go both of those products are in my database easy simple and intuitive now what i look there are some other issues also in this page if i come to catalog i have like this error which i'm going to fix in the next video but for now these are not required you know why this error happened because we are adding an event listener to a uh, button which does not exist if you check out the code even you can find it at event listener to this one now this one is null of course you cannot assign something to the null because in this page we don't have that button now you can add those button to this on the collection page too but for now i just want to make it as simple as possible now what is the next stage the next stage is like where this customer can see all their wish list item that is really important right they add it to the wish list so they can see it later now what you can do is you can add a link here to a page i'm going to do that last but before doing that, I'm going to focus on the back end a little bit because it is very important. I haven't worked on the back end. It is more important than the front end because once you learn how you can uh, do the back end stuff like billing, like uh, showing all those product in here in the dashboard or anywhere like that, then it is going to be a lot easier for you to do the front end. But I will do everything in the front end and the back end, but it is going to take a while. So I hope this video has been informative. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.